There's nothing like Minnesota high school football. Football nights are special. It's about the players, the fans, Let's go! the communities. Prep Preview is here to set the stage each week. Dig into the key rivalries, the unique stories, the players to watch, and break down what it all means. The Care TV Prep Preview on YouTube starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to week five of the Minnesota high school football season. We have reached the halfway point of the regular season. Four games down, four games to go. Welcome to Prep Preview on YouTube. I'm Randy Shaver along with Mr. Craig yeah. Norcus. We are covering high school football games for games being played the week of September 28th, 29th, and 30th. We should have a lot of fun, don't you think? Yes. Sylvie! What does that mean? Before we, you know, well, our intro says we break it all down. Yeah. So we're going to break something down. I brought Sylvie. She is the sexy silver slinky. <laughs> Sylvie the slinky. Remember last year when I no. had a hypothesis that yes. if you put a slinky on an up escalator, it could, in theory, go forever? Yeah. Because, you know, slinkies, they go downstairs on their own. Right. So I tested it out with Sylvie. She and I went to the mall to okay. find out if a slinky could indeed go down an up escalator infinitely forever. Guess what? what? The answer is no. You know why? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Because okay. the mall security came and got me before we had a chance to fully do the experiment. So I think they would have come to get you anyway, for now, regardless Sylvie and of whether I, you had a slinky in your for hand For Sylvie and I, the answer is no, but we're okay. going to try this again. I know you will. Well, before we get into the spotlight game, later in the show, I'm going to release my all-time all Metro football team, the greatest Metro football players from 1987 to now. That's coming up. Lots of great memories. But first, an explanation. Mankato West is in our spotlight game Friday night against number two rated Chanhassen. The last time we talked about West, Craig slighted the Scarlet, saying Andover and not West should have been in the prep bowl last year. That remark created bulletin board material and got the Mankato West players and coaches fired up, and they went out and beat Andover that night and didn't want to talk to Craig, rightly so. So Craig has decided to bow out of any Mankato West conversation today so as not to create bulletin board fodder. Craig, are you sure you don't want to say something? <laughs> Is that yep you do or yep you don't? But What's the, okay, good for you, smart man. This game has been circled on the calendar. This is a co-anchor's dream, by the way, to have him looking like this. Circled on the calendar since the 5A football schedule was released in the spring. Both teams are 4-0 heading in. It's going to be one to remember. Mankato West at Chanhassen. <laughs> it's our spotlight game. Mankato West is a proven football power in Minnesota. A five-time state champion, the latest title captured in 2021. They placed runner-up to Elk River last fall in Class 5A, losing a hard-fought game in the prep bowl. And it's just a foot race now. Hey. Mankato West doesn't rebuild, they reload. Dominate, dominate, dominate. The biggest thing that I think is just the commitment to the culture and the buy-in. These kids pride themselves and want to be the next team um, that kind of um, goes out and wins that state championship. Chanhassen has been looking forward to this storm team this season for a few years. The senior group led by Sam Macy and star running back Maxwell Woods is special. Maxwell Woods is the most dynamic and elusive football player I've ever had the privilege to be around. Chan head coach Colin Nelson says this team is special. Maybe special enough to make some noise in November. 
The guys have, have done nothing but meet expectations or exceed them at uh, every turn since they, they walked into the high school and in the middle of a pandemic and, and uh, worked their tails off since then. So it'll, it'll shake out how it shakes out, but uh, I know that at the end of it, we'll, we'll know we've done everything we could to give ourselves a chance to play football inside. And I think every kid in Minnesota, that's, that's their dream from the time they, they go to their first high school football game. So hopefully we can make it happen, but we have a bunch of good teams, but we're excited about the season. So the spotlight game Friday night is a fabulous 5A matchup. Number one ranked Mankato West at number two rated Chanhassen. We'll have full highlights on CARE and the Prep Sports Extra at 1015. And then, of course, at 11 o'clock on the Prep Show, which is on cable and YouTube and CARE11.com and CARE11 Plus as well. It's going to be a great matchup. We've taken the tape off, so you can now say a few things if you'd like, Mr. Norcus. Yeah, well, you know, that tape actually <laughs> tore half my cornea off, so... If I miss a few plays on the spotlight game this weekend, we'll know why. Well, you're supposed but to close your eyes when now, you put the well, tape over your eyes. Now that I have it off, I actually do have something to say about okay. these teams. I've okay. seen both of them in person. I know you I have. I have great things to say about both. Mankato West, they present a huge problem offensively for teams on defense because they have a lot of different personnel packages, a lot of different alignments they can put in where they can run or pass out of, and they right. specifically have a jumbo package where they bring in a lot of beef on the line, a lot of beef behind the line, and they line, line up quarterback Bart Mackinich behind yep. it, and they say, stop us if you can. Right. And most times you can't, and a lot of times defenses will sell out against that jumbo alignment, and it creates a seam or a crease. Mackinich twice busted long yeah, TD runs in the Andover game I covered. Yep. You go to Chan, Maxwell Woods is the best running back in the state. Yep. He has to be. Yep. But they also have a quick strike ability. They have a passing game that can get down the field rapidly. They have a swarming defense. So there are things to like about both teams. I am really looking forward yep. to covering this game. The last time we saw Chan was against Elk River on opening night. Mm -hmm. Tyler Smith, their star defensive back, did not play in that right. game. But he is back now and playing. And so he'll make a difference. Yeah, in he makes game. a huge difference. Yep. He'll be all over the field. So all right. this is going to be a classic. It's going to be a great one. And since we're talking about Class 5A, let's check out the latest Associated Press rankings that came out on Monday of this week. No change from last week's rating at all. No movement at all. The top 10 stays exactly the same with West at number one, Chan at number two, of course, sets up a big Friday night. It's very rare to not have rankings change at all. I mean, that just doesn't happen. How about I make one guarantee about these rankings? Sure. I will make one guarantee. <laughs> there will be change. They will change next week. <laughs> yeah, there will be because there's a lot of matchups within this uh uh, the, the top 10, actually. Brainerd's yes. playing Alexandria this week. St. Thomas Academy yes. is playing Armstrong this week. So we will see some yeah. movement for sure. Now, big changes in foray. Hutchinson, the number one team all year, lost at home to Ricori on Friday night, 11 to nothing. It's the first time Hutch football has been shut out since 1974. That according to head coach Andy Rosper. That's 49 years ago. So even you, the eldest of the eldest, doesn't remember <laughs> that shutout. That's exactly 49 right. 49 years ago. And Hutch but, plays Becker this week. But let's face it, anytime it's Becker yeah. versus Hutch, you can throw out the rankings. Yes, you can. These are two smaller schools that are both unmatched, in my opinion, in terms right. of their community and fan support. It's always a classic game. Hutch had some key injuries in that loss. They now travel to face the new number one team, Becker in 4A, on Friday night. This game played at the newly minted White Lundin nice. Stadium. But honestly, they could play this in somebody's backyard. It wouldn't, wouldn't matter. matter. These two teams are fabulous, as Craig pointed out. And the two coaches, wow. Legendary. What a coaching matchup, Andy Rosberg and Dwight Lundeen. Between them, 614 wins, just 217 losses in 79 years combined of coaching. Dwight is in his 54th season. Andy in his 25th as head coach at Hutch. Hutchinson has won seven of the last 10 matchups. But Becker has won the last two games in 2021 and 2022. Two storied small town football programs meeting on Friday night. I can smell the pork chops from here. And if, if you've never had the pork chops, Becker. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's got to be your first stop when yeah. you get to the stadium in that, Becker. That's one of their that's their staple, the pork yeah. chops at Becker. But I have a what, a, what per, a great game. I have a personal message for Coach Dwight Lundeen. He's both of one of our favorite he's, he's people. He's a great guy. He did. You did ask me a little while ago to be an assistant coach on your team, <laughs> what? and. I would okay. love to do that, however. I don't, I don't, think, know, I don't think the man's that desperate. I don't yes, know if I ahead. have enough time until I retire. So, Coach Lundin, if you could wait 13 years, I know you'll be in your 67th year of coaching and you'll be 89 <laughs> years old, but we all know you can do it. Then maybe we can talk. Let's if go. If there's anybody that <laughs> it, can could coach do it. at age 89 in this state, <laughs> it would be Coach Lundin. It is Dwight Lundin. All right, let's check out the 4A <laughs> rankings heading into this week's games. Again, some changes at the top. Becker's the new number one. Ten first place votes this week. Orono is the new number two team in 4A. They received one first place vote. Hutch falls back to number six. Princeton, by the way, undefeated at 4-0. They get Chisago Lakes a week from now next Friday. So that'll be a fun matchup. Yeah, if you want to talk about teams that may not have been on your radar, take a hard look at both of those. Chicago, Chicago Lakes at number eight and Princeton at number 10. That will be a matchup we'll be looking at soon. And here's some of the games Friday we're uh, checking out, and they should be great, great ones. The Hutchbacker game. Minnetonka plays Shakopee this week. Armstrong, St. Thomas Academy, both in the top five. How about Forest Lake coming off the big rivalry win last week? They're at Stillwater. Spring Lake Park will take their running game to Andover. That'll be a great game. And Orono and Mound West Tonka, both undefeated in Class 4A. That should be a lot of fun. Andy Rosberg told me that he's going to be without his quarterback, Logan mm -hmm. Butler, with a concussion, two linebackers, his starting fullback, a D wow. lineman. They played five wow. JV players against Ricori to hang in that game, but ultimately lost by the score of 11. But nothing. you know what? To only give up 11 points to a decent Ricori oh, team, good. despite those injuries, yeah. that says a lot about their team, too. And, and I just got a feeling, you know, Hutch is very deep. Yeah. And I, I just have a, a feeling that those five JV guys yeah. probably have some reasonable talent. And remember, it's week four, yeah. right? When this, when this game was played, it's not the playoffs yet. Right. They've got four weeks to get themselves healthy, healthy enough yeah, and be to back on track. But. Hey, another huge injury last Friday. Very sad to hear this. A torn ACL for Minnetonka star quarterback Milos Spasovic. He is lost for the season. The senior QB was having a great year for the unbeaten skippers. This is Milos in the action in action last Friday in the first half before he injured uh, suffered the injury against Prior Lake. Such a great athlete, strong arm, a great leader. It's just a terrible shame for Minnetonka to lose him for the season. They play at number six Shakopee on Friday night. Well, you were at the spotlight game. Last week, when Eden Prairie took on Shakopee, yep. EP winning 42-28, what was your takeaway from that game? Well, what I saw was a Shakopee team that came to play yep. and competed and matched up well with an Eden Prairie team that did have an overall size advantage. Yeah. But Shakopee made some key mistakes, including a turnover and some costly penalties that you just can't make when you're trying to upend the number one team right. in the state. And they're always tough physical games, right? Yes, they are. And this one was. So we start off, Shakopee quieted the home crowd with a Bradley Hansen three-yard touchdown run. They were up 7 nothing, just like that. But Eden Prairie going forward on fourth and 10. It's a lateral. Joshua <laughs> Kelly passes to a wide-open Lucas Rakovich. That's a 7-7 tie now. Sabres driving. This was a costly turnover. Leighton Kearns throws a pick. Max Kukla, nice pick there. It stops the drive, but the Eagles cash off that turnover as they typically do. A three-yard touchdown run by Liam Burnt, 14-7 EP. Three, under three to go in the half. A pitch to Sabre. Zach Doctor. He's got doctor-like moves. He eludes a swarming defense. A 35-yard touchdown. 14-14. But 35 seconds to go in the half. Burnt at it again. A six-yard touchdown run. Made it 21-14 EP at the half. Fourth quarter. Now 28-14 EP. Quarterback David Ivey making a case for Weeble of the Week here. Yes. 21-yard run down to the eight. <laughs> yes. And it sets wow. up a one-yard TD by Jeremy Fredericks. 35-14 there. EP goes on to win 42-28, yeah. to 28, asserting the number one spot in 6A. Okay. Well, EP will play at YZ this Friday. That'll be a good game. And as I said, Shakopee will take on Minnetonka in another big 6A game. Check out this wild play from Farmington High School in their Thursday loss to Lakeville North last week. Farmington's at their own one-yard line. Quick pass, Jonah asked to Brock Wyant. And watch what happens. Brock turns on the Jets, takes off down the sideline, 
Wow. He almost gets tripped <laughs> up. Watch this. Right here. Whoops. Whoops. Goes He's 99 yards for the touchdown. It's a great play. What a run by Wyatt. Here's We're going to the... look at it again. Look at how far that he stumbles. It's like 20 yards. Oh He's trying gosh. to regain his balance. Good for And he him. does, and he goes 99 yards. But that 99-yarder actually gets topped. It does. How about Buffalo's Wyatt Osterbauer? This is a 104-yard interception return for a touchdown in a big win against Eastview. Eastview was driving to take the lead when wow. this happened. Buffalo is now 3-1 and one in the season after an opening night loss to Eden Prairie. And I talked with new Buffalo head coach Jackson Litterer this week. For me, a little bit, you know, ignorance is bliss in a way of, of being brand new to the, to the state of Minnesota and high school football. And I've heard a lot about uh, it, but until you experience it, it's, it's hard to really understand it. And from week two, week three, week four, I think we just continued to grow um, and get better. And, and fortunately, we can say we, we have some victories along the way, but it's never been about, you know, we're always competing to win. Everybody is. So let's like, I think that's just a, an understanded point. But for us, that's not a word you hear us talk about is, is winning. We're more focused on our process process and how we go about it and the stuff that creates winning. That's what we care to talk a lot about. And I think the wrong question for us as coaches, this is my own my own take, so take it or leave it. I think asking kids to buy in is, is the wrong approach. I think I think it's more about creating something that they feel is worth buying into. I think there's so many other things out there in, in today's society that, that kids have the ability to go do. For them to choose to want to come and play football for us, we want it to be an experience that's fun, that's inviting, that is exciting, that is challenging, that will actually push them to get better. And every day genuinely is just a, a blast to go and do. And I always I always kind of tease, you know, I love my wife and my family. And I, if I'm not going to be at home spending time with them, then I better be having a ton of fun and enjoying what the heck I'm doing if I'm not going to go be with the most important people in my life. And I can genuinely say every day that that's happening. And so um, I think they're feeling that I'm feeling that our staff is feeling that it's just been a, a good experience so far this year. And he's done a great job because they, they are playing really good football right now. They are. And you know what I love about that? His take is that we're not asking kids to buy into something. We're going to create something right. worth their while to something buy special. into, like creating a culture, creating an environment, an excitement, a challenge. That makes a lot of sense to me. And yeah. they got him playing right now. Yeah. Great job, Coach Litterer. All right. Let's check the rest of the rankings for this week, starting with 6A. Eden Prairie continues to be the unanimous number one team with all 12 first place votes. South stays at number two. Tonka plays Shakopee this week, and Forest Lake is taking on Stillwater. That's the interesting game to me. Forest Lake at number seven at Stillwater number eight. Last year, Forest Lake was 5-0 and until they faced the ponies of Stillwater and got handed their first loss. I'm wondering if there's some range of revenge going on there. We'll see uh, what's going on with that. Then 3A rankings, Dassel Cocado remains number one. They play number 10 Litchfield on Friday. Stewartville and Esco round out the top three. I'm going to keep talking about Esco as long as they keep piloting the points pontoon. They beat Pequot Lakes 60 to nothing last week. Their point differential is now 262 to 20. Pequot actually was in the top five before that loss. Class 2A rankings, Barnesville's number one. Chatfield and Caledonia will match up Friday, October 6th. That's going to be fun. St. Agnes moves up to number six after a win over Holy Family. Nice win for St. Agnes over the triumvirate of coaches that Holy Family has. You bet. And Class 1A, Minneota, the dominant number one with nine first place votes. Mayor Lutheran, Lester Prairie, they're going to square off. In one week, October 6th, that's going to be a lot of fun. They're in the top six this week. Minneota does look solidified at that number one spot at this point. And the number one, or the nine-man rankings, number one is Mountain Iron Buell, the defending state champ, nine first-place votes. Spring Grove and Fertile Bell Trammy round out the top three again this week in nine-man football. And our colleague, George Marinsel, continues to walk <laughs> around with his chest pumped out, parading around the building with a lot of confidence yes. because his Mountain Iron team is in that lofty spot. <laughs> <laughs> he, is a, he is a man from MIB, that's for sure. All right, let's have some fun. Oh, I've been naming boy. an all-Metro football team every year since 1987. You can find all of my teams on care11.com slash prep. I've named all-decade teams in the past, but I thought it would be fun to name the best of the best, my all-time all-Metro football team. This is so cool. And the time that you spent on this project, it literally goes over years. But you know what I want to give you the most credit for on this project? The tape loft that we have for 
things. Anything before 2011, you have to go to this scary dungeon-like tape loft room. <laughs> There's rumors that it's haunted. There's all no. kinds of noises and creaks and things and scary occurrences that happen, especially when you're alone. The number of times that you had to go to this tape loft just to find right. video for this makes it an all team of all time anyway. So well, great job with I, that. I appreciate it. This that. is gonna be exciting. All right, so this is the all time team from 1987 through actually last year, 2022. Lots of incredible players to choose from. Very hard to make these decisions, yeah. but only one quarterback for me, just one. And that's where we start. You're my quarterback. Awesome, very nice. You're it. Oh, I. I'd How do you be, feel about that? I'd be very honored and humbled. Um, a lot of great players that uh, played this game here. So yes, Joe Maurer is my only quarterback on the first team. Joe Maurer, 2,000, 41 touchdown passes, three interceptions, Gatorade National Player of the Year in 2000. Committed to Florida State to play football. We all know the story. He ended up signing with the Twins. I just missed covering him by one year. I kind of disappointed in that. I came one year after he graduated. I would have loved to have covered him, but he was, he literally could have played anything. That's what's amazing. Look yeah. at the spiral he throws. Like, he's just that, fabulous. That's, that's incredible. But he literally could have played anything. Basketball Joe Mauer, or anything. Not only could throw the ball, he could run the ball. He was just a great leader all around. All right, three running backs. Maybe the best running back mm. I've ever seen in high school football in Minnesota. That guy, Thomas Tepe. St. Paul Johnson, All Metro, 1997, 1998. Of course, he grew up playing soccer in Liberia, Liberia, ended up playing for the Gophers, played in the NFL, Star Trip player in 1998. Fabulous. I football. remember him best as a Gopher, just running people over constantly. All right, Carl McCullough, 6'2, 220 out of Creighton Durham Hall. Two-time All-Metro player. Incredible speed for his size. Look at this in the Metrodome. Look, look at, at that the big turf. pads. Look at the big shoulder pads. <laughs> and look at the turf. It's he was the Star <laughs> Trip Player of the Year as a junior in 1991. He played college football at Wisconsin. Just a great His strides player. look like Robert Smith there. He does, yeah, yeah, exactly. How about this? Carson Ooh. Hansen, Lakeville South. Yeah. 2021, 2022, he's now at Iowa State. He rushed for 455 yards and... 4,555 yards and 57 touchdowns in his career. A guy I covered several times, I can attest he should be on this list. He ran by people, making them look like they were standing still almost every time he touched the ball. I, I know you can talk about the, their offense and everything, but he was just a great player. Only two receivers. You gotta have Larry oh Fitzgerald, boy. right? Larry yeah. Fitzgerald Jr., Holy Angels, 1999-2000. Had 2,600 yards receiving and 29 touchdowns in his two-year career. Played at Pitt, played for the Arizona Cardinals. He's going into the NFL Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's eligible for the Hall of Fame in 2026. I gotta think he'd be a first balloter, but he's even got the Larry Fitzgerald Foundation, which is dedicated to providing youth resources and breast cancer awareness. He was he's, a ball boy for the Vikings. How about that? Just a great player. And then, how about Michael Floyd? Michael Floyd. Michael Floyd for Creighton Durham Hall. All Metro in 2006, 2007, incredibly fast, deceptively strong, amazing hands, 2,487 yards and 33 touchdowns in his career, played at Notre Dame, drafted by Arizona in the NFL. He was an outright he's, he's, incredible player. He's the best receiver I ever saw personally in the state. Remember when we visited him at Notre Dame to do a story yeah. on him and we got locked in the stadium? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Floyd. So just two receivers, one tight end, Whoa. just one. Rashid Hageman, Washburn, 2007, 2008 All-Metro, 6'6", 265, great hands, very good blocker, ended up playing defense too, played for the Gophers on the D-line, was drafted by Atlanta in the NFL, all-time great player. He played for Atlanta in the 27 Super Bowl against, 2017 Super Bowl against the Patriots. Rashid Hageman, Hageman. out of Washburn High School, is my tight end and, and play defensive played line too. Defensive All right, offensive line. NFL. Are you ready? Here we go. Frank Ragnow, Chan Hassan, All Metro in 2013, played tackle in high school, four star recruit. He played defense too. He had 102 tackles and 14 sacks in his career. He committed to Arkansas to play college football, and right now, Frank Ragnow may be the best offensive center in the NFL playing for the Detroit Lions. Well, yeah, he anchors one of the best offensive lines in the NFL with the Lions. I love watching 
this high school video of him to just to see where he blossomed. Look at this. From. And Look at the speed. Too. Yeah. How about this guy? Chantrell Henderson. Ooh, he All was Metro, massive. 2008, 2009. Considered the top overall player in his class by a number of recruiting services. Just an outstanding player, made all USA team in 2009, Offensive Player of the Year, college football at Miami, played a little bit in the NFL. He was a force. You're literally going to see him, I think, block two guys right here. He's going to push <laughs> one guy into another guy, and that other guy falls down. Just That's so how strong he good. was. Yeah, how about this guy? J.C. Hassanauer, oh, yeah. Eastridge, played center in high school for the Raptors. Chose to play college football at Alabama. That was a big deal mm -hmm. back in 2013. Currently in the pros with the New York Giants. Outstanding football player. Relentless is the word that comes to mind every time I see him block. J.C. Hassenauer out of Eastridge. All right, this is before your time, Craig. Yep. Mike Dowdy, Lakeville. Dowdy. 1991, 1992 All-Metro, big offensive tackle, 6'7", 275. They won the state football title in 92, played college football at Notre Dame, just a dominating player. Did you literally just see him take that guy 20 yards downfield? He made a block. He kept on the guy for 20 yards. Yeah, he was just an outstanding football player. His nephew, by the way, playing for Lakeville South. Okay. My last lineman, oh no, I'm sorry. Two more. Two more. Ryan Harris of Creighton. 2002 All-Metro, 6'5", 275, played college football at Notre Dame, played 10 years in the NFL, won a Super Bowl for the Denver, Denver Broncos. Just an outstanding football player. He's one of the first linemen and one of the best linemen I remember covering, and it's just another, they seem to, Crete and Durham Hall seem to pump out these great linemen yeah. back over And he the played day. on both sides of the ball back then. And then you remember oh, this guy, yeah. Quinn, Quinn Carroll, Carroll. Edina, 2017-2018. Great tackle, punishing blocker. I mean punishing. Committed to Notre Dame, currently starting on the Gopher offensive line. Incredible motor and athleticism. Six offensive linemen on my all-time team. <laughs> Look at Quinn Carroll. He, he had the best footwork out of any offensive lineman I, I saw in college, period. The best footwork. All right, so that's the offensive line. Specialists now, athletes. All right. We start with who else? J.D. Spielman, Eden Prairie, 2014-2015 All-Metro. Electrifying as a senior for EP, 1,259 yards rushing, 102 carries, 12 touchdowns. That's he was a right Gatorade there. player of the year. He played college football and uh, just a fantastic football player. Played at Nebraska. He arguably has the most impressive overall highlight reel on this list because he literally did everything. And defensively, pick sixes, everything. All right, I have three specialist athletes. How about Max oh, McAnelli? Yeah. He's got to be on this yes. list, right? Just a great overall player for Waconia. All Metro in 2021, 2022 on both sides of the football. Incredible defensive player. He did everything for Waconia. World caliber wrestler, mm -hmm. four-time Minnesota State champion wrestler, currently a gopher. You knew when he did great things as a freshman, something was cooking. He never left the field. He, he literally never left the field. And then Nate Swift, Hutchinson, 2002-2003 wow. All-Metro, three-year starter on both sides of the ball. He finished his career with 4,396 yards rushing, 1,648 yards receiving, and 72 touchdowns. Played at Nebraska, just a great overall player. I remember covering him like it was yesterday, and that's 20 years ago. That, that freaks me out. One kicker. Patrick LaCour yeah. out of Edina, 2014. Led the state with nine field goals made that year, longest from 47. 30 game high school career with Edina. He has the state record with 26 made field goals. Averaged 40 yards per punt his senior year. Kicked for Idaho and Ball State in college. Not only a strong leg, but he had the focus and the ice in your veins required to be a great kicker. We have one punter on this team, and he is a big time college guy. Mac Brown, mm -hmm. St. Thomas Academy, 2015 All-Metro. Helped the cadets to the state championship his senior year. He averaged 46 yards a punt. He holds the state record for the longest punt ever, 87 yards. Wow. He lettered in swimming and tennis, too. Oh. He punted for Ole Miss in the SEC. Here's that 87-yard punt. I got to know Mac a little bit through Chris Hughesby and his special teams football academy. And not only is he a, ta a talented person, but a super nice guy as well. All right, so that's our offense, our special teams. Here's our defense. We start the defensive line, Trevor Laws. Menace. 2001, 2002 out of Apple Valley, played fullback and linebacker and defensive line, Gatorade Player of the Year, an, un, an incredible wrestler, 
considered the best heavyweight wrestler in the country his junior year. Played college football at Notre Dame, played in the NFL for four years. That's a jaw-dropping list. We're seeing a common theme here with these wrestlers being menacing football players and making the all-time list. <laughs> he was such a good football player. All right, Eden Prairie. They, you know they got to have some players on the defense, right? Right, they How about do. Willie Mobley? Oh, yeah. 2006, him. 2007 All-Metro, just a great player, dominating player, 6'2", 260, played college football at Ohio State and New Mexico State, Willie Mobley on our defense. You're going to you see in a play coming up the closing strides he makes on the quarterback right here. I, I, they're like, what? look at these strides. I know, Whoa, man. Two strides and he's got them. All right, here's Walker Ashley, Eden Prairie, 2003-2004 All-Metro, the Strib Player of the Year in 2004. Three-year starter, 89 tackles, 25 for losses, 14 sacks his senior year, played college football at USC and for the Gophers. Just like Creighton is pumping out the offensive linemen, Eden Prairie seems to pump out these defensive linemen. Yeah, you can't talk about all Metro defense without talking about Eden Prairie. This guy is great. Jonathan Harden played for mm. Creighton Durham Hall in 2010, 2011. Only five foot ten, but I remember this kid like yesterday. Mm. He was such a good football player, plugging the hole, rushing the passer. He led the Raiders to a 33 and four overall record. Two-time All-State football player, Jonathan Harden of Creighton as Durham Hall. As far as an interior defensive lineman, he's unmatched. And this guy, before your time, Craig, Jason mm -hmm. DeVries, Forest Lake. 1991-1992, outstanding defensive tackle, all-state football player, standout wrestler, state champ wrestler his senior year. I think he's a doctor now, just outside of the yeah, Metro. Jason a 38 one wrestling record his senior year. What was the one loss? <laughs> I want to know. Here's our linebackers. We go to Eden Prairie to start. Antonio Montero, yeah. remember him? Yeah. 2017 All-Metro, Metro Player of the Year, Mr. Football in Minnesota, 235 tackles in his career, 29 for losses. Played college football at Rice University. 29 tackles for losses. Now that is outrageous. That Ch is exactly why he is on this list. All right, YZ is a linebacker factory. And on my All-Metro team, they are well represented. Yep. A.J. Tarpley, 2009 All-Metro, outstanding linebacker, played college football at Stanford. He retired from the game at age 23 because of concussion issues, but boy, he was great. Fast, smart, great leverage, one of the best. In 2016, playing for the Bills, he made an interception against the Jets to knock them out of the playoffs. Unfortunately, it turned out to be the last play of his career because of the concussion issues. Yeah. All right, how about this guy? James oh, Laurinaitis, <laughs> yeah. 2004 All-Metro, flat out a stud, 193 tackles, 28 for losses, five sacks his senior year, just his senior year, <laughs> played college football at Ohio State, played in the NFL, he's now coaching linebackers at Ohio he State. He was the prototypical oh. linebacker with his form tackling and football instincts, I remember him well. Yeah, all right, so Laurinaitis and Tarpley from YZ, we go back to Eden Prairie for one more linebacker. Blake Sorensen, 2005-2006 All-Metro, Mr. Football by the uh, Minnesota State High School Football Coaches Association, two-time All-State, led Eden Prairie to back-to-back -back Class 5A state football titles, played college football at Wisconsin, fabulous football player. Also capable of scoring a touchdown. Yeah, as we see he did here. everything for Mike Grant's football teams back in the day. And then... This guy from Champlin Park was the stud of the studs at yeah. his time. Sam Marish, 2006-2007 All-Metro, most dominating football player of his time at Champlin Park, great tackler, bounced around after high school, he played for the Gophers for a little bit, outstanding prep star. Another guy very similar to Laurinaitis with his form tackling and football instincts, a prototypical linebacker. All right, so those are the linebackers on my all-time All-Metro defense. Let's look at defensive backs now. And we start yeah. with the late great, Marion Barber III. 2000, All-Metro from YZ, incredible athlete, competitor, and he picked off Joe Maurer. Twice. <laughs> Twice. Joe Maurer only threw three picks his senior year. Yeah. We're gonna watch Marion Barber get two of them. <laughs> and he, I can't believe of him as a defensive back yeah. when he was such a road grader as a running back such, for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, such a great player for the Gophers in college football. Of course, unfortunately passed away yeah. recently. But Marion Barber the third, 
makes our all-time All-Metro football team, and rightly so. The guy was just a fabulous football player for Brad Anderson. Steve Rosga, yeah. Creighton Durham Hall, 1990-1991 All-Metro, one of the best defensive backs I've ever seen. Did it all for Creighton. Part of that big Rosga family and that connection with Creighton. Play college football at Colorado, but you love this play. This, if you've ever seen our all-time <laughs> retro Weeble play, this is it. And Steve Rodka has the Weeble Forever Award based on that play right there. Jake Ratzlaff, you remember this guy. Yes. Rosemount, 2019-2020 All Metro, four-star recruit, Star Tribune Player of the Year, two-time All-State, incredible tackler from the mm -hmm. safety position. In his career, 261 tackles now playing college football at Wisconsin. I covered him a few times, and it was the velocity of his hits, what I remember the most. Very Ronnie Lott-like. Yeah. All right, so that's three. We've got two more to go. One more hit Did by you see Ratzlaff. one more hit by Ratzlaff? Yep. Ryan Iverson of Eden Prairie High School. We see more, one more from Ratzlaff. Here's Ryan. 1996-1997 okay. <laughs> All-Metro. He was the key player, Craig, as EP started to win state football titles, without a doubt. They won their first titles in 96 and 97, and Ryan Iverson just had a nose for the football. He played in the biggest games on the biggest stage, played football for the Gophers, later basketball at Delaware. Well, you can see all the EP players that are on this all-time defense, that's what they did, play defense and ran the ball to those state titles. Adam Runk, Stillwater, 1996 All-Metro, outstanding two-way player for the Ponies, incredible defensive back, hit like a linebacker, played college football at Iowa State, part of the great teams by the legendary coach, George Thor. I was super impressed. All-time all Metro. Yeah, I was super impressed watching the video of this guy. I, I Very impressed. Wow. So that's it. That is my all-time All-Metro wow. high school football team from 19, uh, 1987 to now. Now, I do name a second and a third team, because how can you not? There's so many great players. And you can find all of this on care11.com slash prep. And uh, just a blast to look back great at the job greatest high school. Football. Thank you, I appreciate that was, it. That was fun. That was money. The one thing that that was so cool. But there's one thing that really freaks me out and yeah. makes me feel old. All these moments when you see them visually, you know, when we get the faces of the players, we get that before yep. the game. Yep. Seeing these faces and seeing these plays, like I remember so many of them, like in that moment. Yeah. It, and it really makes me feel old. I mean, it's, it's cool but we are freaky. Old. I know. <laughs> it's cool and freaky. It's kooriki. Okay, whatever that means, I don't know. All right, thank you to all those yeah, players awesome. and all those coaches and all those fans. It's been a lot of fun to cover those all-Metro teams. We have our Hot Highlights choices for the oh, yeah. week. Hot Highlights is sponsored by True Stone Financial. This is a crazy interception by Jaquan Randolph of De La Salle. He traps the football somehow against his helmet behind his head. Oh. Somehow he holds on for the pick. Watch it again. That's hot highlight number one. Wow. Incredible. Hot, hot highlight number two is a great touchdown catch by Dylan Vocal of Maple Grove in a big win over Anoka. Vocal goes up to get the ball from Caden Har Harney. Great catch. That's hot highlight number two. And you've already seen this one. This is hot highlight number three. Wyatt Osterbauer from Buffalo. The 104-yard interception return for a touchdown in a victory over Eastview. Amazing play. That's hot highlight number three. And the rest now is up to you. You can go vote on care11.com. The voting will end at 3 o'clock on Friday. I'll announce the winner during the Prep Sports Extra at 1015 on CARE Friday night. Some Thursday night games of note. Simon Seidel of Hill Murray, the Gopher recruit, will be taking on North St. Paul. I'm sorry, I have the starting time on that wrong. It's a 6 o'clock start at Hill Murray and a few other games in Class 6A. And on Saturday, just a handful of games are out there. St. Agnes is hosting Concordia Academy, that game being played at 6 o'clock. All right, now it's time for our Weeble winner of the week. Yeah, we have a good one this week. You know, for anyone that's been annoyed by flying insects around the home, sure, and you don't have a beastly pet good enough to catch them as they roam, hmm. a Weeble wobble, but they don't fall down. Go Wobblers, go Wobblers, go! This week's Weeble can haul off and throw! Hey, hey, look at me and Weeble! We all get bugged by flying insects, so take note, I implore. The Weeble this week is Wyatt Gilmore. He's Rogers, <laughs> defensive end, tight end. He stands at 6'4", 245. He's going to be number 41. He's going to be a 
the tight end pass to the flat right here. Yeah. Let's check out what makes him a Weeble. Okay. We'll first, watch the play. Nice. 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 Boom! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets better. More, more, more. Yes, he got in. So we're going to play this again. I want to point out what I am calling the fly swatter because he literally <laughs> uses one arm to eliminate that player from contention. Get one, out of the way. The fly swatter, the fly swatter. Yeah. Here he goes. But number 44, to his credit, he almost goes back to make the tackle, but he's yeah. too weeble. Wise. Well, how about the block, though? Yes. How about the block here by Tanner Carlson? Boom! That wow. also springs Big the Weeble. Block. Congratulations to Wyatt Gilmore. He's going to Oklahoma to practice his Weebleizing. What a guy. Yeah, great play. And actually, the that play swatter. helped them win that football game against Spring Lake Park. That was under a minute to go yeah. in that game. All right, that's it for the show. Reminder, Prep Sports. Oh, boy. Reminder, Prep Sports Extra, Friday night, 10-15 on CARE, then at 11 o'clock, live on cable, care11.com, care11 YouTube, and care11 Plus. Our spotlight game, Mankato West, don't you say a word, against Chan Hassan should be a lot of fun. We'll see you next Wednesday. Enjoy the football this week. Sylvie!